Well, as someone else who's mixing news, sports and perhaps uh, talk of drugs, if not actually uh, bringing them on to set for us to examine, Haxi Myers belkin who's been looking through the international papers, drugs all over the international papers today. Uh, and this time we're talking about the Paralympics. Absolutely. Uh, Russia banned outright from competing at the Paralympics. Uh, reads the front page of The Guardian. Uh, this, of course, against a backdrop uh, where of the 389 Russian athletes who were supposed to compete at uh, this year's Olympics, only two-thirds were actually allowed to go to Rio. Uh, recent weeks and months have revealed a vast Russian uh, government-sponsored doping programme, and according to this piece, uh, Sir Philip Craven, who's the International Paralympic Committee president, had the courage of his convictions. Uh, the Guardian quotes him as saying that the Russian government has catastrophically failed its para-athletes. Their medals over morality mentality disgusts me, he said. Very strong words indeed from him. Uh, there's also an article in the Daily Beast about this. Uh, they're arguing it's not just Russia who should be ashamed. Uh, they say that uh, the International Olympic Committee has been uh, taught a lesson as well. Absolutely. The uh, the author of this piece doesn't pack any punches. Uh, the Olympic spirit survives, he writes, but only at the Paralympics. Uh, he continues... Craven's bold ruling and his explosive attack on institutionalised drug cheating served only to highlight the Olympics' lack of conviction. That, of course, in their decision to allow two-thirds of Russian athletes to compete at the Olympics. And, I mean, one of the main issues is people wondering how much can we really trust the results that are going to be coming out, who's clean, who isn't, that kind of thing. Uh, there's more controversy around doping, this time affecting one of Britain's top cyclist, uh, Lizzie Armitstead. She's had question marks placed over her, hasn't she? Um, and she was in action at the weekend. Absolutely. Uh, the cyclist who was tipped for gold, widely tipped for gold, finished fifth uh, in the women's road race. Uh, now, Armistead has attributed her dashed dreams to, quite simply, a, a a punishing climb. Um, but there's a piece in the Times that I thought was quite interesting. The Times isn't so sure. Uh, Armistead missed three consecutive drug tests uh, in the run-up to this, this year's Games. Uh, and that's, of course, enough to get any athlete uh, disqualified immediately. Uh, but she later got that first missed test dismissed. But that, of course, as you just said, did not stop people talking. Uh, this piece argues that knowing that she was the focus of all this justified scrutiny made Armistead lose plenty of sleep, uh, as well, of course, as racing opportunities in the build-up to what could have been her crowning glory. All right, one more doping-related story for you. There really are so stop, many today, aren't there? Uh, some uh, proof, perhaps, that accusations of doping can have uh, ramifications that are very uh, widespread. Uh, Slate.com with an interesting angle on this whole Olympics doping scandal. Uh, the headline says it all, really. A foreign swimmer set a world record. Uh, let the irresponsible doping accusations begin. Uh, on Saturday, Hungarian swimmer uh, Katinka Hozsu uh, smashed through a world record in the women's 400 uh, metres individual medley. Uh, the author quotes a US correspondent website, Swim Vortex, as tweeting, something smells in the women's 400 medley. Yeah. Uh, and another tweet from the publisher of American magazine Swimming World as saying speechless and powerless uh, next to a picture of the leaderboard. So for this journalist, it's wrong to make nod, nod, wink, wink uh, suggestions that specific athletes have been doping when there's actually no hard evidence whatsoever. Um, while, the, while US athletes are lauded for their wins, uh, argues this author, uh, according to this piece, uh, everyone else, foreign athletes, are guilty until proven innocent. All right, uh, it really is uh, quite a murky situation. Lots of uh, claims, counts, claims and suspicion. It's all summed up uh, quite well in a, a cartoon that you've picked out for A us. cartoon in the Times, yes. Uh, we see Christ the Redeemer um, looking on in despair at an Olympic city comprised, as you can see there, uh, of a cheating stadium, oh. uh, a bribery venue, a scam zone, a synchronised mugging area uh, and a thief park. I have to say, I've personally been enjoying the sporting action at the Rio Olympics just to balance things up a little bit. But yes, there is a lot of scandal around it. Let's move on to another story. This one's from the Turkish press. Uh, they've been covering that enormous demonstration in Istanbul yesterday. It was uh, slated as a unity rally. It sort of seemed to be more of a pro-government thing. 
Absolutely. Uh, millions stand for democracy, reads the front page of mainstream paper, uh, the Hurriyet Daily News. It's worth saying here that non-Turkish media outlets are putting that number uh, quite a bit lower. Mm -hmm. uh, it goes on. After defeating the uh, July 15th coup plotters, millions of citizens gather for a pro-democracy rally, uh, leaving aside all of their political differences. Uh, so very much a message of national unity here. Mm -hmm. And it's a very similar story uh, in the pro-government Daily Sabah uh, editorial. Sunday's rally is described as the most inclusive in the Turkish Republic's history, uh, with political parties representing polar opposites uniting to defend democracy. Uh, and then comes a rather strongly worded dig at American and European coverage of recent events in the country and a hope that Sunday's rally uh, will be covered uh, positively on their front pages. All right, that's where we'll have to leave it. Thanks so much, uh, Haxi Moes-Belkin, taking us uh, through the international papers there.